you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Ignorance is bliss. Scotland Yard's made a number as well of uh, preemptive arrests in the run-up to the wedding in the last few days, didn't they? They said it was, it was to ensure everything went off peacefully today. I don't know what you think. Because right now I'm thinking the same thing. Actually, I, I've been thinking it ever since I got here. <sighs> why, oh why didn't I take the blue pill? The fact that they're trying to stop, and did stop, protesters exercising their right to freedom of expression around the royal wedding is of much greater concern because the police were talking about snatch squads and dawn raids. Um, and in fact, those are the sort of measures that are indeed used in countries like Syria, but were used against UK protesters, including notably uh, leading peace activist Charlie Veach, who was swept up yesterday as a preemptive measure and has apparently just disappeared into the Metropolitan Police system. His family, his girlfriend can't trace him. They're being blocked and lied to by the police. Even his lawyers can't find him, so he seems to have sort of been disappeared in a rather Kafkaesque way. And I think it's a dangerous, dangerous path to go down because this man hadn't done anything. He might have been suspected that he might want to go and protest, but he hadn't done anything. So effectively what we're looking at is an Orwellian thought crime within what is a notional UK democracy. It's very unbecoming of the upper classes and of the, the very rich to have the peasants maybe revolting at the bottom. Do we have a deal? And what we saw for the royal wedding on Friday the 29th was the suspension of any ideas that we live in an egalitarian free country. Charlie's still not free to enter central London, at least not until he answers bail next month. Then we have a deal. I don't remember nothing. Nothing. You understand? I don't want to be rich. You know, someone important, like an actor. And my God, I've only been here now, this is day three. I met the structural engineering firm that made uh, the Twin Towers. I've poured through the original documents of the World Trade Center. I've met a controlled demolition expert and uh, we were chatting on the 45th floor, floor of the new World Trade Center 7 building and you really saw the vast scale of the World Trade Center complex and that new Freedom Tower that they're building, which would be 1,776 feet high. I don't know, man, like, I was a real firm believer in the conspiracy that it was a controlled demolition, that it was not in any way as the official story explained, but meeting these engineers, meeting these demolition experts, meeting, meeting the aviation experts that explain how these massive airliners can be controlled rather easily at any altitude and can be accelerated and exploring the kinetic energy in um, Boeing 767's traveling at 500 miles an hour slamming into buildings. It's, it's really opened up a lot more questions and it's answered a few of mine in terms of pyroclastic dust. I mean, let's not forget the hundreds and thousands of tons of concrete which is pulverized in the greatest kinetic energy release of a building ever. It's, um, I think because the governments lied about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and uh, hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians have been killed, we do suspect foul play when other terrible events, and in a way, and uh, let's just look at body count here, in a way, what happened in Iraq with the terribly illegal invasion and the lie of weapons of mass destruction was so much worse than 9-11. And if governments can lie and kill half a million people, why wouldn't they lie about killing 3,000? It doesn't take an incredible leap of fantasy or faith or gullibility. No, we're not gullible, we're just truth seekers in the 9-11 truth movement is trying to find out the truth about what happened. So we're going to carry on and we're going to speak to a few more people on this road trip. And we're going to end up in Washington DC and also go through Shanksville and look at the crash site for Flight 93. So the mind boggles. Uh, this reality, this universe is truly one of smoke screens, illusions and uh, wrong paths, but also the right path, which is always be committed to the truth. Do not hold on to science, sorry, do not hold on to religious dogma. 
if you're presented with new evidence, take it on, even if it contradicts what you or your group might be believing or wanting to believe, you have to give the truth the greatest respect. Do we have a deal?